Hey everyone, it's Cheryl from Tinker's Cart Art, and I'm just popping in this afternoon to do a little quick painting of some sunflowers. People have seen this painting in my background while I'm working and have inquired about it, so I thought I would just jump in and show you how quick and easy it is to paint some of these sunflowers. It's summertime, seems like summertime anyway, and it's kind of nice to paint some some fun flowers for the summer so i'm going to work fairly quickly because i want to show you it's pretty simple the less you stress about it um, the more fun it is and and you'll see the joy in the painting because you didn't stress over it and this big painting um is like a blue background and i'm going to quickly do it on my little painting just to get something behind the flowers i'm using just some teal and some blues I'm quickly just working around the flowers. I'm not going to fuss or take time or worry about every little bit. I'm just doing this around. I just sketched on some flowers with a pencil. It's pretty simple. They get these big round centers and some petals coming out. If we don't like their shape when we're painting them, we can change them certainly. I'm just using a couple of shades of turquoise and light blue. Painting really quick, because I want this to be wet. I want to add other colors to this background as, um, as I'm going and before it dries. And this is a little canvas, so I'm not going to worry too much about what the background looks like, because it's really hardly shown. After I'm done painting, I might put a little bit of these colors in the middle to separate them. So I just did some blues and turquoises, and I'm just going to, while it's wet, take in some white. Can you see I'm just using little X-y crisscross strokes? And if you're on my email list, if you're on my Tinker's Cart Art email list, you'll get this anyway, even if you're not, you know, didn't watch it here or, or didn't sign up for it. I do send it out to everyone. I like the turquoisey background. I like to add a little, maybe a little bit of lavender in here just here and there you could add any colors you like this background you could do lots of different ways really looks nice on a purple background the yellow really pops i've seen it done like on a brick red that looks nice too so just quickly got in my background my flowers and if you've painted with me you know i start with darker colors and then build up to light so we're going to start like with an orange and a gold and then build up to the lighter white Blend my where my petals are gonna go with an orange. Notice I'm not worrying too much about hitting the blue. There's gonna be lots of layers on top of these petals. This is just a base coat, just wanting to cover that white background, really. I don't mind if it mixes in with that blue. It's just gonna get a little bit of a brown tone and that's, that's okay. You can even go in over where the middle's gonna be a little bit. That's going to be a very dark middle, and it will cover any little bits we need to. So they just, see the petal shape? They're just a little, almost like a teardrop shape. I'm going to work my way right around. And I want to get that orange on there and get that to start drying. Really don't have a, a plan. I sort of just sketched a few of the sunflowers like I have there. And really, it's just a matter of getting that white covered for now. I just want to get that covered. If I pick up too much of that blue on my brush, I just dry brush it off. Start again with some more orange. And I think I'll just do little bits of petals here because this guy, I think I'm going to have the petals go on top. You can see they're very layered here. There's some on top of one another. It's underneath there. Okay. Now, I think I'm going to force that to dry a little bit with my heat gun because I just wanted to make this kind of a quick little tutorial for you. Usually I have patience and I wait. So I'm going to just give it a quick blast of heat just to get it dried so we can work right on top of that. If you don't follow me already on YouTube or Facebook, I'm Tinker's Cart Art. So please give me a follow. 
on Tinker's Cart Art Facebook page is a button to subscribe to my email list. I appreciate that. If you do, you, you'll um, always know what's going on. Sometimes Facebook doesn't send these things out. So I'd like to make sure that you know what we're doing. Okay, I'm using the same brush. I'm not washing it off. I'm just drying it off. I'm going to go into that gold color we have now. And I'm just going to go over a little bit on top. Yellow and gold is notoriously transparent. And you're not going to see it much here. Once I start adding some white to it, it really gets it a little more opaque and it will show up. But I want to put a layer on just as it is here. But do remember, if you have any colors that are transparent and you're having a hard time with coverage, a little bit of white will give them a little bit more of an opaque uh, nature and you will be able to cover things a little better. But I just, and can you see how ever slightly they're just getting a little lighter already? And I'm just almost just touching each little petal. I'm just using kind of a little C stroke both ways. This is not brain surgery, it's just throwing on some color. I'm not worried about staying right on the petals. Like on these guys, I have no problem if I went over the edge a little bit, which I'm going to do afterwards on purpose when the paint's a little brighter. I'm gonna take a little bit of white now, mix it in with some of that gold. You can see now how it's lighter and how it covers a little better. Another tip, if you're in a flower and say it's a daisy and you have a yellow center or, or a yellow flower, you could always paint it in white first and then go over it. I know if you're doing a, um, like a, a dark colored flower, say you're doing a maroon or something and you want a yellow center, if your flower is all red or maroon, that yellow is never going to cover. Do it white and let it dry and then put your yellow on top. So I've got this gold mixed with a good bit of white. so that my yellows are gonna start really popping when, when I put them over. It's kind of back and forth. I'm just kind of going back and forth with some of the different shades that are on my palette. Sometimes I don't worry about covering the whole petal, like I said, because I don't mind those colors that are gonna start being underneath showing. But you can see these look a little bit muddy, Barbara. They're a little muddy until I get those really brights on top and then some white highlights. So. You'll see that as it progresses. These little petals are underneath. When I want to make this flower, for instance, look like it's really on top later, I'm gonna add more white and leave it a little darker underneath. And use less colors. Many times I paint with just the primaries and mix as I go. But if you have some already, these color, this, you know, the colors like this, you can use them. You don't have to always mix, but if you don't have that wide variety of paints, you can always mix from the primaries. And in my classes, a regular class that's a little longer and more involved, I'll always instruct you on mixing all the colors up too. So, okay, going to some of this yellow. It's a little bit lighter than the gold. Putting it here and there. Can you see I'm not painting each petal in perfectly? I'm just dabbing it here and there. I want a lot of dimension to my leaves. I want to see oranges and I want to see yellows and whites. I don't want each petal to be alike. And how I achieve that is just taking all my colors that I'm using and putting them on here and there. I'll go back even with some of the orange if I need to. Can you see though, now you're starting to see a little orange, you're seeing a little of the lighter colors and the dark. Once I add some white even to this yellow, look at how much that pops. And you can see on here, I have some areas lighter than others, so they're not all gonna be the same. Just keep going back over your petals and you're gonna step away and you're gonna look at them and, and know what you like. Here's where I don't stick right to making them perfect with petals. I, I can go over the edge a little bit gives it a little rougher, more impressionistic look. That's how I paint. I like to use a lot of color, a lot of brush strokes, a lot of action in the painting. It doesn't always have to be just the, you know, the same, if they're yellow, you don't have to be all the same shade of yellow. I like to really mix it up a little bit. No rhyme or reason too much. I'm just stroking over the petals. This one we're gonna actually do lighter because we want that to be on top. And even as you go, you can change the shapes of your petals. This is a little pointy. You can change them if you want to. 
sunflowers are pretty cool. They would have lots of layers. You could throw extra layers in there if you want. I did them just with kind of a petal shape there. Still leaving some of the orange showing here and there. And can you see how they're building up? What do you think? They do like some of the petal shapes that have like a little bit of a, more of a point here, and then you kind of do that. So you can start defining your shapes. This petal is on top of that flower. I won't go any lighter with that petal, but I'll go lighter with this one. And can you see now how it's clearly on top of that? The ones that are closest to you, we will make a little brighter. This guy's kind of behind some, a little bit behind here. That petal looks like we're going to make that petal on top there. So even like these petals are like two petals together. If we put a little light there, it separates them. And now this petal is on top. To get a little bit away from it too to see. Usually stand up to do this, but I wanted to be able to do it on the camera right here for you. But remember when you're painting to step away and get back. You're looking at it this close. No one's looking at your painting that close. You're going to find every little piece that you don't like and nitpick it. Step away and look at it from a distance, which is how your viewers are going to see it. Oh, hummingbirds. Oh, Barbara, that would be a good idea for a subject too. Um, oh, I've got so many um, ideas, and but that's a good one. I like that. Okay. I went afterwards, I took some of this light orange out. Of course, I took enough out to paint 16 paintings. I always put too much paint out. You could certainly have mixed this color up with your orange and your white. But I like this color to put in just here and there. Again, no rhyme or reason, just like the way it looks, you know, as highlighting on some of these petals. Any of the colors you have on there, you have a particular one you like, you could just add it in. I want a little bit lighter on this petal. It's just a little dark. Do that. And they're getting lighter and brighter now and less muddy looking. And so now I think I might take some of my, just my yellow. If I think I need something really needs to be bright. Can you see how, let me lift it up. You can see some of these areas that are really bright. And I like it a little darker around where the center is going to go. It would be a little darker. The center would cast a teeny shadow onto the petals. So here and there, I'm just adding a little bit more bright. That one. Yeah. I just do them really dark. They're brown, but they're almost black. So I'm going to take a dark brown here. And I'm going to paint right over where my petals were. I'm not going to squish it right in there. I want them nice, big, and bold on here. And this brown is a little transparent, so we'll do a couple coats. Now, this center is under this petal, so we're going to do that. Nice and big, though. And I want this to be much darker, and look at how light it's coming out. It's because the paint's a little transparent. Some of your paints, depending on the brand, have less pigment. Um, but they work still fine. You just have to be patient and do a, a little bit, uh, you know, a few more coats. So I'm going to... Put those as a start. That's where they're going to go. The second coat, I've taken a tiny bit of black in with that brown, and I just want to cover those streaks. I appreciate you guys that pop in and paint with me. It's a lot of fun. It's more fun to have somebody to chat with while I'm painting. We do I'm trying to do a lot of classes. I have some free classes every month for everyone. I have some that are paid. They're ten dollar classes. So we've got the centers drying. While they dry, I don't have much for leaves, but let me show you some quick little leaves. Hardly anything. They take a second, and this is how simple they are. I'm going to just mix up. I have a nice primary yellow and a nice primary blue, and it's going to make a nice green for a leaf using just a flat acrylic brush. And I'm just going to tuck them from behind coming out. Just one stroke, kind of pressing that, that wide brush and twisting it and getting little leaf shapes. I can use it to cover up the little places where I spattered paint by accident. You can make some darker, adding a little more blue, get some dark ones in there. 
and then some light ones. So making that green up again, add a little white to it. I kind of want just a, bit, a little bit of a lighter green. And I'm just layering them. Some are on top of one another, they're just peeking out here and there. They are not the focus of the painting, but you know, you could tuck them in wherever you might want a little something, something. That's all that is for that. So I'm gonna rinse that brush out. And now, the center of these guys are super dark, so those are black. I just take just some black paint, and inside these guys, I'm just painting a black circle. It's just a little darker. You know sunflowers have that big center and it's a little concave in the, in the middle? That's what this little black circle is going to be. And your centers can be varied. They don't have to all be, I did an oval one, kind of more of a circle, more natural that way. They're not all picture perfect. Makes it look a little bit more natural. And I really used a lot of colors, mostly what was ever on my palette over there for the background too. Um, see the centers, how they've got little purple, some pink, all kinds of colors. I do them a little brighter here because that's gonna make this area a little higher and then it di dips in into that black. So I just get that kind of look by putting some lighter colors around the edge there. And any brush you want, you could use a flat or a round. I'm gonna just grab this uh, one here. Take some of my orange. If, if it doesn't work, I'm going to blast it with the hair dryer. I mean, the heat gun, so we'll see. But around the edge of that, I think I'll go to a softer brush, is when I put something light. It is blending with that brown. So I may just hit that in a second with the hair dryer. Yeah. Just with some light orange. And I really don't plan out. I just put them and can you see now it's they're showing up much nicer because the paint's dry and I'm using this bristly brush which has got a lot of texture to it and that is giving me these little streaks I like the look of I'm taking the light orange and just going around the centers a little bit sometimes I bring it out here like the leaves um, the petals I add just different colors randomly make it more interesting and then really I went in with like a bright pink, bright, like a fuchsia color. I don't know why, I just like the colors. And I just kind of put a few streaks here and there. I'm using a little bit of a light pressure so that it shows up. This color on the dark tends to uh, blend in, but I'm just using a very light touch. Maybe a little of the purple, a uh, little of the light purple. It's almost of a blue purple that I use. I'm gonna do this. I'm really just dabbing here and there. Right? And what else did I do? Some oranges, I've got that purple. The centers are pretty dark. I might go back to my black. I don't want just perfectly black holes. I've taken the black, but I might grab a little of the purple or any color over here. Just so it's, it's hard to see while it's wet. I'll show you when it's dry. It's almost giving it just a little bit of a, maybe a gray or whatever it looks like, but I just don't want it to be like a black hole. It is darker than the rest, but it just gives it a little something. And I finish them off by these little dots randomly around the edge. I'm not doing perfect little dots and spacing them perfectly equal. I am just going to take any color I want on my, on my little round brush and I'm dabbing it around. I am not trying to stay on the line. I'm going on the line sometimes. I'm going out, I'm going in. I'm just getting some texture and some color in there. And you can use whatever color here is on your palette to do this. I'm gonna go through quite a few of those colors. And I know this is kind of quick um, and loose, but I like the style. What do you guys think? Do you... um? like to paint this way sometimes too, just a little looser and rougher around the edges. If the yellow, of course, is gonna be translucent, like I said, I'm just mixing it with some white. It's yellow on yellow, but you can still see it. And if you don't, that's okay, because you'll see the ones I put on the dark area. It doesn't have to show up everywhere. This is the fun part, the fun finishing touches part. So it's just showing you don't have to struggle to paint flowers. They don't have to look perfectly realistic. Got some white dots here. 
And you can also, you know, use the back end of your brush and do some. They come out a little more perfect, but there's some that you could do with that. I'm barely looking at where I'm putting them. That one probably shouldn't go there because it's on top of a petal on the other side. So look at just a little water on your brush fixes any little boo-boos. I like the look of some of them not perfect dots like that. And like I said, I use pretty much what's on my palette. I like that light green that we had for some of them. I'm going to use some of that pink. I like the little pollen bits on the flower. And you can do a little or as much as you want. I sometimes have to rein it in and step away, but it is fun. You can do the purple ones here and there. No, your sunflowers probably don't have purple in them if you looked at them, really. But I like to make it fun and colorful. And then you step away and look. And then you can say, oh, what does it need? Does it need something? I'm not sure I've done. But here's a little tip. Take a photo of it or hold it up in the mirror. Because it's amazing that if there's something off or something wonky, you'll see it when you do that. Because I'm, as I'm painting here and I'm on camera, I look over at the video port, you know, part of the painting, and boy, I can see things that are wrong pretty quickly. Um, like I see, it looks fine to me here in person, right here, but on camera, it looks really bluish. So I would just maybe take a little bit of a lighter bit and kind of put that there. Nothing to say you can't go back now if you say, oh, the paint has kind of sunk into the background. It's not looking as bright as I liked it. It's looking a little um, too orange or dull. Now you can go back and add a little more bright if you need to, if you think you've lost some of it. You can, you know, one if a petal's on top of another, you can really emphasize that. If it's gotten too transparent, you can certainly go back and put as many layers on as you like. So I've got all the colors, I think. I might want to just to tie the background in a little bit. I'm going to go to that light blue and maybe do a few. Maybe even a little lighter. So, And again, you don't have to get that colorful and crazy if you don't want to, but I think it's kind of fun. I want to get a little brighter. i got some nice bright strokes around the center there. Um, so now that it's dry a little bit, I'm going to just do a little of that, keeping the paint a little thicker. And that's it. That's how quick and easy you can do these flowers. How long did it take us? How long have we been painting? About a half an hour. So that's not bad. Never mind the time I've been gabbing to you. So anyways, thank you guys for popping on.